What's up guys, this is Rhombus's latest paddle, the Nova.R1, and it has a new concept inside of it that I think is worth discussing. So let's take a look. The Nova.R1 sells for $180, but with discount code PBStudio, it drops to $160. And at the moment, it only comes in the R1 shape, which is elongated with a rounded head. However, within the next month or two, they will have the Nova.R3, which is a similar shape to the Carbon 1X. The handle length is 5.5 inches, grip circumference is 4.125 inches, the face is raw carbon fiber, it has a polymer core, swing weight of 115, twist weight of 5.81, RPM of 1805, and finally a six month warranty. All right. You guys know I like to be fair in my reviews, and in my R1.16 review, I basically talked about how the Julian Arnold Mach 1 was a clone of the Ronbus, but for more money. Well, I wonder where Ronbus got their design inspiration from on the Nova. Now, here's the thing, guys. I love the color blue, and in fact, I love this gradient, and I think it's fantastic looking. I also think this looks great, but we gotta be fair here. I mean, come on. This kind of feels like we're gonna have one of those Apple Samsung deals where they just kind of go back and forth at each other. So we need to talk about some technology that Rhombus has implemented into their paddles. I think that's one of the largest selling points. Dong is the owner of Rhombus and he's a retired engineer and he's been working on several paddle concepts. Dong and his son Austin recently went to his factory in China so that they could speed up the production of some of these projects. One of the projects that they finished is this Nova, which has a new patented technology that we should discuss. Rhombus created an entire paper to outline Gen 1, Gen 1.5, and Gen 2 paddle processes from the factory, as well as the shortcomings and strengths of each. They allowed me to publish this on my website for you to read. I highly recommend that you check it out because there's a lot of interesting information in it. In this video, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. The way that Gen 2 paddles are built right now, it is not possible to entirely eliminate core crushing. As much as we've been promised over and over that this won't be an issue for the last eight months, it seems that this is an inherent flaw of how these paddles are built right now. It's possible for them to significantly reduce the issue to a low percentage, but they can't get rid of the problem entirely. Here's what the Rhombus paper has to say about the Gen 2 process. The root cause behind the problem lies in the structure of the Generation 2 paddle and its thermoforming fabrication process. Although the PP Honeycomb core looks perfectly flat and smooth to the naked eye, there are unavoidable variations in the thickness of the core at the microscopic level. This results in space for air in between the face sheet and the PP Honeycomb core. Furthermore, the carbon fiber seamed edge around the paddle creates a fully enclosed unibody structure. With the use of high temperature and pressures, the air from the imperfection in the PP Honeycomb core expands and creates intense internal pressure. Thus, parts of the PP Honeycomb core could be crushed. After a certain amount of play, the constant force of the ball hitting the paddle leads to more areas of the core being crushed. The increased power players experience when using such a paddle can be explained by these unintentionally created pockets. Rather than the ball coming into contact with a solid paddle surface, the crushed core paddles pockets create a trampoline effect. This is where Rhombus's Nova technology comes into play they introduced what they are calling a carbon fiber grid foamed edge. The short version of this technology is that instead of sealing the entire perimeter, they use a carbon fiber grid with gaps in the edges to release that internal pressure. What's also cool about this technology is that from my understanding, they can tweak how stiff or not stiff the paddle will be by tightening the grid pattern or expanding it with larger holes. So this could lead to creating different levels of power and control by tweaking the grid. This is a technology that Rhombus has placed a patent on and I'm glad to see more companies placing patents on their technologies. This will hopefully lead to a market where individual companies have different technologies that make their paddles unique rather than a blatant copy from a factory catalog. I highly recommend reading the full paper on my website as it expands on even more topics that I didn't cover in this video. So let's talk about power and control. This paddle was meant to be an in-between of a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 raw carbon fiber paddle. There are a lot of people who aren't satisfied with the power of a Gen 1 paddle, but also find that Gen 2 has too much power for them. 
I can confidently say that Rhombus has succeeded in creating that. This was evident to me on my very first play session with the paddle. I even came back to Dong at Rhombus and asked him if this was supposed to be an in-between of the two. He shared some internal stats for measuring power and in his test, the Nova did fall between the R1.16 and the Pulsar. For me, I have noticed that if I'm hitting a drive, overhead, or anything that involves a full swing, the power feels great. The area that I thought it was lacking in was pop. Another reviewer that you guys may be familiar with, John Q, has outlined his opinions on pop and power that I completely agree with. Power would be your full swing shots, serves, overheads, drives, while pop is how much the ball rebounds off the paddle without you doing anything. Examples of this would be punch volleys at the net, mid-court resets or blocks, and so on. While poppy paddles are often correlated with a very powerful paddle, it's not always the case. In comparison to the 6-0 Double Black Diamond or any other thermo, this is where I felt the pop was not as strong on the Nova. It's much less stiff and just feels harder to get the advantage in a hand battle. I like having that extra pop and I didn't enjoy not having it on the Nova. However, what I did gain was much better touch in difficult situations. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have less pop, it just depends on the player that you are. I already have a hard time getting ahead in hand battles, so the extra pop is great for me. But you might be someone who has plenty of power at the net and you would like to have less pop to aid in your resets. Because I wasn't fully satisfied with the power out of the box, I tried a few different lead tape setups to see if I could make it suit me better. The first one that I tried was 0.8 ounces of lead in the handle. This is something that I've only done one other time, but I thought the impact on the paddle was really interesting. My hand speed remained about the same because lead in the handle isn't increasing your swing weight. The paddle felt really stable and dense in a good way with all this lead in the handle. But what I did notice after an hour and a half drill session is that my elbow was killing me because the paddle was just a little bit too heavy after that. You're weak. I'm you. So I decided to remove half of the lead from the handle and only keep 0.4 ounces and then put 0.1 ounce on each edge of the paddle. This gave the paddle a really stable feel and added some additional power at the net that I found made the paddle much more enjoyable than the stock version. This final lead setup also brought the twist weight up from 5.81 to 6.44, which puts it in a much better spot than the stock form. For my playstyle, the Nova benefited heavily from lead tape. I really wasn't crazy about it in the stock form, but after applying lead, it was something that I could go compete with and be completely happy. I just wanted to pause this video really quick and let you guys know about my newsletter. If you guys aren't already a part of it, it's a place where I share discount codes, thoughts on upcoming reviews, and often give insights or heads up about paddles that are coming soon. If that sounds like something that interests you, click the link in the description to sign up. One area that I thought would be interesting to highlight is the spin of this paddle. Rhombus paddles in the past have all had very top tier spin. In fact, they've been some of the highest ranking paddles that I've ever tested. Now, with the Novas, they had a bit less spin than my Pulsar and R1.16. I got 1805 RPM, which is by no means a bad result. In fact, that's still a fantastic result. But the Pulsars and R1.16 were around 200 to 300 RPM higher, which in some cases may be noticeable to you. I even ran the test twice and I got the same numbers. I spoke to John Q and STS Pickleball and they both had similar RPM drops as myself. Now, no one needs to go and freak out about this number. In fact, I think a lot of times when we get to this upper tier of spin, people worry about it too much but I thought it would be worth noting because I did think it was a noticeable drop from previous Rhombus paddles. In actual gameplay, I never found it causing any issues on any of my shots. All right, now I wanna talk about the differences between the Nova and the Vatic Pro Prism, because I think these are the two biggest competitors to each other. When I first started using the Nova, I thought for sure the Prism would win on value alone. But the more I played with them, the more I found differences that are worth considering. First, the Rhombus has a longer handle. At first glance, you'd probably think they're the same, but the Rhombus neck tapers later, which allows a noticeably longer handle. There's about a half inch difference in usable area. This could be the difference for a two-handed backhand working great 
or not working at all for you. With my size hands, both work great, but the rhombus is more comfortable. Larger hands would probably struggle on the prism. In terms of feel, the biggest difference is that the prism feels more stiff and slightly more hollow, while the Nova feels more plush and solid. This is not to say that the prism is bad by any means, but when you hit them side by side, the Nova feels noticeably more solid. Specifically around off-center shots, it's more jarring on the prism than it is on the Nova. I even tried identical lead setups on both of these paddles to see if they would play the same or not. The differences were even more obvious to me after applying lead. The springy stiff feel of the prism was even more noticeable than previously, and the rhombus just felt like a really, really solid paddle. None of this is a good or bad thing inherently. It all comes down to what you want from the paddle. I think both of these play fantastic. The Nova feels like an all-around much more solid paddle, especially on blocks. It hits the ball so cleanly and has a great feel. I wouldn't be surprised if this is from the added tension of the carbon fiber grid layer that the Rhombus has and the Vatic doesn't. Now on the other hand, the Vatic brings fantastic performance for an unmatchable price. This was a really interesting journey for this review. On my first day with the Nova, I was not excited about it. I thought it was okay, but for $180, I wasn't impressed. But the more I played with it, the more I found myself enjoying it, especially as I found the right lead setup. Hand speed was good, great feel, awesome touch, and the additional power from the lead was great, even if it wasn't as much as some of the paddles that I usually prefer. It might not be packing thermoformed punch, but it was enough that I stopped noticing the lack of power in hands battles and drives. Which to me says something, because that has been the most frustrating part of the softer paddles for me as of recently. The biggest competitor to the Nova is hands down the Prism Flash. I think that it's a fantastic paddle and it's very hard to beat the value of it. If you're considering both, I think the differences will come down to if you want the really solid feeling and longer handle that the Nova provides. The feel is top notch, while on the Prism, it's a bit less satisfying, especially for blocks, and you do have the shorter handle. If you already have a Prism, I would not go buy the Nova. You have a great paddle that I don't think you need to switch from. Now, if you don't have a Prism, then the Nova is definitely something that I think is worth looking into. Just know that if you do get the Nova, I would highly recommend adding lead tape because I think the paddle's full features can be appreciated most after you put lead on it. So here's who I think this paddle is for. It's for those who couldn't find a balance between a Gen 1 and Gen 2 raw carbon fiber paddle, those who prefer more control than they do power. Now, I wouldn't recommend the Nova if you're looking for a ton of power or you're looking for the absolute best deal. If money is your biggest concern, get a Prism and be done with it. If you need a ton of power, you'll need to consider paddles like the Carbon 1X or Pro Kenix Black Ace. While the Nova might not be the most mind-blowing or biggest jump in technology that we've ever seen, I'm really happy to see a company working on improving issues that consumers are facing. There are tons of copycat paddles on the market and a ton of them are just competing in price at this point. So it's refreshing to have a company like Rhombus try and actually advance things forward to make it better for everyone. So yes, the Nova is a great paddle that I can happily recommend. If you do plan to pick one up, make sure to use discount code PBSTUDIO at checkout to save $20. But otherwise, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.